Hey guys, happy holidays and welcome back to Fantasy Tip. This is a special holiday edition of the Waiver Wire video. This is the Waiver Wire video for week 11, which covers both Christmas and New Year's. So guys, strap yourself in, we're in for a fun episode today. Before we get started, guys, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, follow me down on Twitter at Fantasy Tip. I'm always tweeting out stuff to help you guys win each and every week of the fantasy hockey season. Now, as you can see on the schedule here, this week is divided into two weeks. The first week, there are only four games, and the second week, there are seven games. So in most leagues, both weeks are going to count towards your week 11 points. So both these weeks together will be your total, and hopefully you're able to win that matchup. Now, the first week of the two weeks, there are only four games, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and on Tuesday and Thursday, they're pretty busy nights. So the first section of my video is going to be me just talking about players that you can stream for those Monday and Wednesday nights. The second section of my video is going to be me talking about the players that play on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, since those are the days with the least amount of games on the second part of the week and most likely to fit players in your lineup. The third section of this video is going to be talking about just general waiver wire players that you can add to your team to really help improve your team both this week and in the long run. So starting with part one, which is the first week of our two week, week 11, that's going to be four games. And there are only two teams that don't have the best schedule. Those teams are New York and Toronto. New York only plays one game and so does Toronto. The Rangers game is at least on Wednesday, which is really not a busy night, so it's not that bad. But Toronto has that one game on Thursday, which is the busiest night of the week. So they definitely don't have the best schedule for this week. If you have low-owned Toronto Maple Leafs, you could consider dropping them. Now, there are five teams that have a really good schedule and play on both those Monday and Wednesday off nights. Those teams are Buffalo, Colorado, Dallas, Edmonton, and Montreal. Now, I'm going to talk about only players from those five teams that you can stream for those two games. And first on the list is Jesse Pugliarvi, who plays on the top line in Edmonton with Connor McDavid, 60% owned, so not necessarily available in your league, but there is a chance that he is, and he makes for an excellent streamer if he is. Then I have Alexander Radilov of the Dallas Stars, and I'm not super high on him, and I haven't been all year, but if you need a streamer for those two games and he's available, not the worst in the world, he does get to play on the top power play with Robertson, with Hintz, and with Pavelski, so it's not the worst place to be in the world. Then I have Brendan Gallagher of the Montreal Canadiens, and... He's been on the COVID list, but he has been activated and will play next week, which means that he makes for honestly a pretty decent addition to your team because the dude likes to shoot a lot. And there's so many injuries in Montreal that Gallagher would automatically have a really big spot on the team. Then I have Valerie Nachushkin of the Colorado Avalanche, and he's shown that he can be a really great player. And he's been really good, basically a point per game since coming back from injury, playing on the second line with Nazem Kadri, definitely a good player place to be. Chushkin is someone that you can grab not only for those off nights, but for the foreseeable future. Next, I have Tage Thompson of the Buffalo Sabres, 23% owned, playing on the top line with Olofsson and Skinner, also playing on the top power play. He's someone that shoots the puck a decent amount as well, so he has a pretty safe floor. Definitely a good streamer for those two games. Then I have Mike Hoffman of the Montreal Canadiens, currently playing on the top line with Nick Suzuki, top power play as well. Definitely a good place to be if you're Mike Hoffman. I know the Habs haven't been the best, but Mike Hoffman makes for a pretty good streamer for the Monday and Wednesday off nights. Then I have Victor Olofsson, who I already mentioned in Tage Thompson's description. He plays with Tage Thompson on the top line, on the top power play. Olofsson has a good spot right now to put up some points. Logan O'Connor is also someone who makes for a good ad right now because right now he's playing next to Nazem Kadri on that second line because of all the COVID issues in Colorado right now. So honestly, pretty decent streamer. Then... Dennis Gurianov of the Dallas Stars, 11% owned. Not my favorite option in the world, but right now he's playing with Sagan. I know Sagan hasn't been that great, obviously, but if you need a streamer and you're desperate, Gurianov, definitely someone who could put up a point or two. Then I have Kyle Ocposo, someone who's been really surprisingly good all year. Not playing top power play, but has managed to put up even strength points a lot skating alongside Dylan Cousins on that second line. Don't mind him as an ad at all. Honestly, a pretty decent sneaky ad. Then Jonathan Julian of the Montreal Canadiens, 8% owned, playing on the second line right now. Not a very good second line considering all the injuries in Montreal. But if you're desperate, he's not the worst streamer and he does get to play on the top power play. Jeff Skinner gets to play on the top power play and top line, only 6% owned. So a pretty good deployment for only 6% ownership. Alex Newhook of the Colorado Avalanche, their third line center. And he's been pretty decent. Not my favorite option in the world, obviously, but 
Definitely a possibility to put up points there. Kyler Yamamoto of the Edmonton Oilers plays with Nugent Hopkins and Dreisaitl on their second line. Obviously, it hasn't been that amazing this year, but the opportunity is definitely there to put up points. Then, last but not least, I have Jake Evans of the Montreal Canadiens. Right now, as of this recording, he's on the top line as the right wing. It's possible that Gallagher ends up taking that right wing spot on the top line, so just keep an eye on it. But if Jake Evans stays on the top line with Suzuki and Hoffman, it's a pretty good place for him to be, and I don't mind grabbing him as a streamer for those two off nights in really deep leagues. So now let's jump into the second half of week 11, that second week right after Christmas. There's one team that doesn't have a very good schedule, and that's Minnesota. They only play two games in the entire week, which is not great. And then St. Louis and Toronto play three games, which is not that bad, but they play only on busy nights. So again, Toronto... Not the best schedule in the world, but if you got good Leafs, don't worry about it. They're still going to do well for you. Do not panic too much there. Now, there's one team with a really great schedule, and that is Tampa Bay, because they play Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday on all three off nights. So definitely, I have quite a few lightning in the next couple of slides. Now, there are some other teams that play on two off nights, either Tuesday, Thursday, or Thursday, Friday, or Tuesday, Friday. So these are the teams, Calgary, Columbus, Los Angeles, Montreal, San Jose, and Vegas. And in the next couple of slides, you'll see that I have a lot of players from these teams to help you maximize your games next week. My highest rostered ad for next week is Jakob Voracek of the Columbus Blue Jackets, 60% owned, so he's just borderline made it onto this list. But if he's available in your league, makes for a decent addition. He gets to play top power play. I've been putting up an assist every now and then, so definitely not a terrible ad. Then I have Anthony Sorelli, who's playing on the top line with Palat and Stamkos, which is a very good place to be. And Tampa Bay has all three off nights in part two of week 11. Then Victor Arvidsson of the Los Angeles Kings. I like his deployment a lot. He gets top power play. The dude shoots a crazy amount, always has a very safe floor, and he gets to play on the second line, which is pretty good. Then Boone Jenner of the Columbus Blue Jackets playing with Texier and Bjorkstrand. That's a pretty good place to be between two pretty good players. So Jenner's been pretty good all year, so don't hesitate to pick this guy up for those off nights. Then Blake Coleman of the Calgary Flames, assuming that Calgary's made it through all their COVID stuff and they're all good. Blake Coleman is someone who shoots the puck, who hits a decent amount, hasn't really been putting up the points that much this year but the peripherals are there to give him a pretty safe floor. Then Adrian Kempe, who's playing on the top line with Anze Kopitar, also on the top power play, so he's definitely in a good spot to put up some points. Then Sean Monaghan, who's third line center, but does play on that top power play in Calgary, so he's in a position to potentially put up quite a few points. Then Philip Dano, who's the second line center in Los Angeles, been doing pretty well lately as well. Then I have Max Domi, who's playing on that top line with Roslovic and Voracek, who I already mentioned, definitely could make for a good ad this week. Then Dustin Brown, who's also playing on that top line with Kempe and with Kopitar, and he's someone who's shooting a lot once again, so Dustin Brown makes for a pretty good ad in deep leagues. He's only 9% roster. Then I have Corey Perry of the Tampa Bay Lightning, playing on the third line, but he's on kind of a hot streak lately, so if there's nobody better available, Corey Perry, honestly, not the worst ad in the world. Then Jonathan Dolan, who somehow is only 4% owned, playing on a line with Kutzer and Timo Meyer, And he's been doing pretty well lately. I just honestly don't get how he's only 4% owned. Definitely a great streamer for two off nights. Jack Roslevic, who's on the top one with Domi and Voracek. And Alexandre Texier, who's with Bjorkstrand. And Jenner, pretty good deployment for these guys, and they're very low on. So honestly, some solid ads. Then Ross Colton of the Tampa Bay Lightning, playing on the third line with Corey Perry. Again, not my favorite ad in the world, but if there's nobody better, Tampa Bay does play three off nights. So you'll be getting three games from these guys. And then last but not least, Taylor Radish is no longer playing on the top line with Stamkos, but is still on the power play for the time being. If he's still practicing on the power play, I would consider picking him up in very deep leagues because... Let's face it, Tampa Bay's power play could be pretty good with the guys that they have on it. Jumping into some more general ads now, and the number one guy on my list, and it's not even close, it's Josh Norris of the Ottawa Senators. And I had kind of cheated to put him on this list because I don't usually include guys that are over 60% owned, but Norris is 63% owned, and honestly, Ottawa has been absolutely insane. That Batherson, Kachuk, Norris line, and honestly, the whole team has just looked great as of late. And Josh Norris is someone who should be rostered in basically all leagues. He's so hot right now. He looks really good every time he's on the ice. And he's someone that you absolutely have to add to your team if somehow he's still sitting on the waiver wire. 
Then Anthony Duclair of the Florida Panther is someone who's going to start doing well as soon as Barkov comes back, and that should be very, very soon. Duclair is someone who will play on the wing with Barkov and can definitely put in some goals. Then Cam Atkinson is someone who's starting to heat up a lot right now. Playing on the line with Giroud, definitely in a good spot to heat up. Then Ivan Barbashev just sneaks in at 49% owned. He's playing on the line with Buchnevich and Tarasenko. Both guys who are very good, and Buchnevich is very hot right now. So Barbashev is someone you absolutely want in your lineup if somehow he's available. Then Evan Rodriguez playing on the top line with Sidney Crosby. He's someone you need in your lineup right now. He's looking pretty good as of late. Then Anders Lee of the New York Islanders. Been putting in some goals as of late, which is nice to see. The Islanders seem to be turning their season around a little bit. Hopefully they start turning it around a little bit more, start putting in some more goals, but... They're looking a lot better than they were earlier in the season. And Anders Lee should be able to continue scoring goals going forward. Then I have Tim Stutzla of the Ottawa Senators, 38% owned. Like I said, Ottawa's on absolute fire right now. And he's playing on their top power play as well as their second line. So he's definitely someone you want a piece of. Tim Stutzla makes for a pretty good ad right now. Next is Andrej Kasha of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And like I said, they don't have the best schedule in the world for these couple of weeks for week 11, but Andre Kasha is looking fantastic on the wing with Austin Matthews. And until Mitch Marner comes back, he's going to be in that top line spot. And he's someone who makes for an excellent ad. Then Eli Tolfanen of the Nashville Predators is someone who's doing very well right now and is getting top power play time with all the COVID that's going on right now. So Tolvan is someone who has a really good opportunity to put up some points right now. And then I have Oliver Wallstrom of the New York Islanders, and he's looking really good right now on the ice. He's possibly their best player on the ice night in and night out. They have to give him some more ice time because this dude is producing with the little ice time that they're giving him to begin with. Then I have Kasperi Kapanen, Pittsburgh Penguins, playing on that top line with Rodriguez and Sidney Crosby, that's somewhere that you want to be. Captain is someone who could definitely put up some points for you. Then I have Capo Caco, and I don't know how serious Panarin's injury is, but when he went down with it, Capo Caco was the guy who was elevated to the top power play in New York, and guess what? He produced and looked pretty decent on that top unit. So if Panarin misses a good amount of time, Kako is going to be on that top power play and therefore has a lot of fantasy value. And he's already on that top line with Zibanejad and Kreider. So he's definitely got every opportunity to succeed. Then I have Connor Brown of the Ottawa Senators. And like I said, Ottawa's looking fantastic right now. So you absolutely have to grab Connor Brown playing on that second line. You know, doing pretty decently at only 8% owned. Then I have Nathan Walker of the St. Louis Blues playing on their third line, which isn't that great right now due to a couple injuries. But... Nathan Walker, in a small sample size, has been able to produce, so I don't mind adding him speculatively and see how he does. He's Australian, and you don't see a whole lot of Australians in the NHL. It's pretty cool to see. Then I have Logan Brown of the St. Louis Blues, 1% owned, and he's playing on the top line with Ryan O'Reilly. That's a fantastic place to be, and until Perone comes back, Logan Brown is going to be on a top line. Now, Perone probably will be back at some point this week, but until he comes back, Logan Brown is someone that you can definitely stream in deeper leagues. Then I have Alex Formanton of the Ottawa Senators, who is 0% owned, but is also playing on that second line with Stutzla and with Connor Brown, makes for a pretty decent ad. Jumping into some defense, and if you guys want to see some more defense options, I only have six listed here today. If you want to see some other options though, guys, go ahead and look right up here. I got defensemen listed in my last waiver wire video and there are definitely some good pickup options. I just didn't want to repeat the same defenseman over and over again. So just go and check out that link and there's a lot of good defenseman options for you there. But for this video, the first guy I have on the list is Alex Goligoski of the Minnesota Wild and he's been on quite a hot streak lately and until that dies out. Golgoski is someone that I'm rostering right now and he's looking pretty good. Then I have Keith Yandel of the Philadelphia Flyers. I know what you're saying. Yandel's not that great of a hockey player. He really isn't. He's he's not too useful at anything. The one thing he's good at is manning the power play. And now that Philadelphia's power play seems to be kind of looking good again, Keith Yandel is someone that you can consider rostering again. He's not going to get you points outside of the power play. But if Philadelphia's power play keeps clicking, Yandel should be able to string out some points, and that's what he has been doing lately. Next is Noah Dobson. 
17% owning. He's basically a must-add right now. He's looking so good for the Islanders, and he's been one of their best players over the last few games. He's on quite a point streak right now, and he is definitely someone you want to be adding. He's top power play in New York, and he has a really good opportunity to put up some points. Then I have Tyler Myers of the Vancouver Canucks, and he's been putting up a lot of peripherals lately. He's the guy who's able to put up some points here and there as well. Doesn't really get power play time, but he's someone that gets a lot of ice time. Then I have Ben Sherratt of the Montreal Canadiens, and Montreal is now playing him on their top power play. I know Montreal is not that great of a team, but they're trying to showcase Sherratt right now because they're going to trade him at the deadline. So they want him to look as good as possible. So if you want to grab Sherratt and hope that he puts up some power play points, I don't mind that. He also puts up some decent hitting peripherals as well. And last but not least is Matt Roy, and he's someone who's been putting together a really solid season quietly. He has really good peripherals every single night, and he's someone who puts up a point every few games as well. Obviously not the best option in the world, but at only 3% owned, he's definitely someone that you can consider in deep leagues. Jumping into goalies now, and the first guy on the list is Mackenzie Blackwood, New Jersey Devils, 60% owned. And the Devils aren't the best team in the world, but if you need a starting goalie and Mackenzie Blackwood is sitting there on your waiver wire, he's definitely someone who you should, should be grabbing right now because Bernier is going to be out for a while. So Mackenzie Blackwood is someone who's going to get a lot of starts going forward. Then Ottinger and Holtby are going to be split in the starts for the near future. Then Jonathan Quick is the guy who is the starter right now in Los Angeles. Peterson's not doing that great and Quick is doing pretty well. So definitely someone who you can consider grabbing. Jake Allen is a starter in Montreal. And like I said, Montreal has not been great, but he is going to be the starter until Carey Price returns. Then, Pavel Francouz of the Colorado Avalanche. Now that Kemper is on the COVID list, Francouz has a really big opportunity here. If he's able to play well, he may be able to steal some starts for the rest of the year, maybe get a split job 50-50. He's not going to get much more than that, but 50-50 split job, on a really good team like Colorado, it's a good thing to have. I would definitely speculatively add Francis right now. And he's the starter right now, actually, anyway, because Kemper is on that COVID list. Then I have Anton Forsberg of the Ottawa Senators, only 10% owned. And some people have to add this guy because Ottawa's on an absolute tear right now. And Anton Forsberg is their starting goalie. And he's playing very, very well. Anton Forsberg has to be added in a lot of leagues. Then I have Uko Pekalukunen of the Buffalo Sabres. And Dustin Tukarski should be coming back relatively soon from COVID protocol. But Pekka Lukanen has been playing so well, he's probably going to get a lot of starts even when Tukarski comes back. They're going to split the starts at the very least. That's why I have both Tukarski and Lukanen on this list. And last but not least, I have Scott Wedgwood of the Arizona Coyotes, and he is their starter as of right now. So if you're desperate for a guy to get some goalie starts, Scott Wedgwood is the guy to grab. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Happy holidays. Happy New Year, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.